Hello everyone, this is Anton Pelcher. I'm an engineer and I've been constructing fish farms for more than 10 years. Today we're going to talk about water treatment in RAS. We're going to figure out what is the origin of suspended solids, how water treatment is done in the right way, what types of biofilters exist, what media is, and which types of media are used in RAS. Also, we will talk about how to select a water treatment system for a rice farm correctly. Be sure to watch the video to the end, because I am going to tell you not only about water treatment units options, but also about the criteria of selecting a biofilter for each of the main fish species farmed in RAS. In general, invention of biological water treatment technology dates back to the 19th century. Then the British tried to clean municipal wastewater from pollution. In fact, they tried all possible methods. They tried multiple methods, including chemical ones, and nothing worked. So they just gave up and left the non-treated wastewater in an open reservoir. Just imagine the dirty wastewater in a large tank or reservoir, and it's placed outside, in the street. Well, after three or four weeks, if I'm not mistaken, they came back and they saw that the water in the reservoir has become purified. It was much cleaner than it had been before. They took water samples and realized that there were no organic pollutants. Then they started to figure out what the reason was and why they failed in the beginning. They tried to clean this wastewater in various ways, both mechanically and biologically, but they could do nothing about it. Then they just gave up and when they came back, the water was miraculously treated. So they figured out that there are special bacteria that treat the sewage water from the organic pollutants. What is organic pollution? These are, of course, nitrogen, phosphorus, and so on. So, that's when the first biological treatment units appeared as the British finally figured out the principle of biological water treatment. These units were called aerotanks. These were tanks which oxygen was supplied to, and oxygen is indispensable for bacteria to decompose organic suspension. It contains active sludge, and these groups of bacteria are just the same bacteria that purify water from organic pollutants. What does RAS biological water treatment system look like? In RAS, everything looks similar, but not completely identical to the municipal wastewater treatment systems. As a part of its vital process, fish excretes feces, feed residues and mostly urine that contains nitrogen. So, if the feces and the remains of the feed are removed by means of mechanical water treatment, the nitrogen cannot be retained by any mesh, it's dissolved in water, and it's very toxic to fish. Thus, biological water treatment has started to be widely used in RAS, but the technology is adapted to treating water from nitrogen. How does it work? There are special bacteria called nitrifiers, which are settled on a special substrate. Huge aerotanks are not usually used in RAS like at municipal wastewater treatment plants. In this case, much more compact tanks and efficient technologies are used. Special media is used in the biofilters, and this media has a very high surface area. Instead of being suspended in water, bacteria are fixed to the media, and thus they are being held in the system. So there is a certain amount of media inside the biofilter, and all this media is gradually being overspread with a special bacterium that is called nutrifier. Water is passing through the biofilter, and nitrifies treat water first of nitrites. So, the first group of bacteria, called nitrosomonas, treat water to nitrites. That is, they convert ammonia into nitrites. And the second group of bacteria is nitrobacteria. They convert nitrites NO2 into nitrates NO3. What about nitrates? Everything is simple, they are not as toxic as ammonia. Of course, they can harm fish, but only if they are contained in water in very high concentrations. Basically, nitrates are not a problem, because they are simply washed out of the system. Is it necessary to treat water of nitrates? Well, yes, if you want to have a completely closed system. But I need to say that it's an economically unviable option, especially in Russia, which is my country of origin, as it's a big country with a large amount of water resources. If we consider Africa or any country with lots of deserts, for example, it would probably make sense to install a special unit treating water of nitrates. As for the classic biofilter, nitrates are simply washed out of the system and do not cause any problems. 
So we have figured out that the biofilter treats water from ammonia nitrogen, which is released by fish in the process of vital activity, and which cannot be detained by mechanical water treatment units. Let's now talk about what types of biofilters are used in RAS. Let's start with the less popular types of biofilters. The first option is a sand biofilter. What is it? In fact, sand is also a substrate for fixing bacteria. So back in the 70s, sand filters were developed and began to be actively used. Mainly the Americans adapted and started using them in RAS. Sand of a certain fraction was poured into these filters, and then it was constantly suspended under water flow. That is, water is constantly moving upwards, and the sand is continuously being suspended, practically the same process as inside the moving media biofilter. The only difference that the air is not supplied. All the process happens due to the upward water movement. What are the advantages of the sand biofilter? The fact that the sand is fine and has a very high surface area, which is 3 to 4 square meters per cubic meter. Thus, you will need less sand than plastic media. And also, the sand is much cheaper than media. Basically, you might think it's the perfect biological treatment unit. Everything sounds really cool, but it's not that simple. In fact, almost all over the world, there is the tendency to stop using sand biofilters. Well, very few companies are still using such filters. Why? Of course, that's due to the fact that they have certain disadvantages as well. And the first main drawback is that sand biofilters are quite unstable. They are difficult to start up. I have encountered such situations when starting out this type of biofilter took six months, so it's unstable in operation. If suddenly water supply is somehow disrupted, all the sand will sink to the filter bottom. Then it will need to be lifted up again. This is a long story. Also, the sand is constantly washed away from the biofilter and it needs to be replenished. It seems to be nothing terrible, but the sand that was washed away from the biofilter gets further into the pumps and then to the drum filters. Actually, it clogs the entire rust system. It clogs and causes grinding of the rotating equipment elements. So, if you use sand filters, the whole system may get dirty or even clogged. The units fail much faster due to the fact that sand is an abrasive. Therefore, of course, the technology of sand biofilters is not bad, but they need to be properly selected and designed. Also, you need to take into account all the aspects that I have just told you about. They are quite difficult in maintenance and can harm your equipment, especially pumps. The next option is a trickling biofilter. What is a trickling biofilter? Basically, this is a cylindrical tank with special bio units inside. It contains polymer media in the shape of honeycomb. It could also be tubular or of some other shape. Bacterial colonies are attached to it. But the most important difference of a tricking biofilter from all other types is that media is not covered with water, submerged, but it's on the surface. The water is sprayed above the biofilter through special sprinklers. Then the drops fall down passing through the media covered with bacteria that treat water from organic pollutants, that is, from ammonium nitrogen. So this is the same nitrification process, which result is complete biological water treatment. These biofilters could be of any height. But as a rule, they are really high. These are large columns that are placed only inside buildings with high ceilings. What else should be said about trickling biofilters? The advantage is that they provide for additional water degassing. Since water gets into the air and breaks into droplets, carbon dioxide is blown off water. Thus, in such a system, you don't need a separate degassing unit. But let's also talk about these biofilter disadvantages. First of all, it's quite an unstable unit. It's very difficult to maintain, it could fail, and this may result in some problems. Insects are constantly swarming inside. Those of you who have already encountered that, please press the like button. And of course, to install this type of a biofilter, you need the building with high ceilings. Because if the ceilings are 3 meters high, then you won't be able to locate this type of biofilter inside. The last aspect is that due to the fact that the honeycomb media surface area is less than that of the moving one, and much less than the sand surface area, 
The volume of this biofilter type should be 3 to 4 times higher than any other biofilter type. That is, instead of a compact biofilter, you have such a large unit installed inside your building, which you still need to find space for. Some who have got used to this type of biofilters still adhere to using them. Well, why not? There is nothing wrong with them. But personally, I wouldn't recommend trickling biofilters, though everyone has the right to choose. And the last type of biofilters are biofilters operating on media. This plastic media has already been used for more than two decades and all over the world. Media is loaded into the biofilter tank. It has a fairly high surface area, and the principle of its operation is the same as it serves as a substrate for bacteria colonization. There are two options of such biofilters. The first is the most common that runs on moving bed, that is, when the media is lighter than water, it floats on the water surface and is constantly bubble touched by means of aeration. And the second option is a fixed bed biofilter. In order for the granule to be slightly heavier than water, the necessary additives are added to the plastic. Then the granule sinks, it's not aerated, water moves from top to the bottom. And this type of biofilter additionally acts as a mechanical treatment unit. So let's consider the pros and cons of these biofilters. Firstly, let's be honest, these biofilters are most commonly used in RAS in comparison with other biofilter types. Thus, I can say that the drum filter and the moving bed biofilter are some kind of classics and are commonly used in RAS. The media is plastic. First of all, it's almost eternal, as it doesn't erase like sand. Although, if it's not of very high quality, then it can be gradually erased. I have seen cases like this, when you retrieve media from the biofilter after several years of operation. But nevertheless, let's call it conditionally eternal. At least it will operate perfectly for minimum 10 years. Secondly, it has a much higher surface area than that of a sand biofilter. The maximum surface area of the sand biofilter is 350 square meters per cubic meter. The fixed to moving bed surface area can reach 700 to 900, and using some types of media, even more than 1000 square meters per cubic meter. The next advantage is that these biofilters are very stable. That is, if you put the media inside the biofilter and you properly maintain the unit, nothing will go wrong. Of course, there are some aspects and nuances, there are failures everywhere, but in comparison with other types of biofilters, this is a much more stable and predictable technology. What are the disadvantages of such a biofilter? Well, it probably has only one, which is the high electric power consumption. Since moving media needs to be constantly bubble touched, then basically you need to supply air to this biofilter. And to do that, you need a blower, a compressor that will constantly consume oxygen. It means that the biofilter will never operate by itself, independently, without power consumption. Sure that power consumption could be high, but I must say right away that due to constant aeration, carbon dioxide is blown off the biofilter. And if it's not done at some stage, then carbon dioxide will accumulate in the system. In addition to the biofilter, you will have to provide for a separate degassing unit. Therefore, with proper aeration, and if the system design is done correctly, a moving bed biofilter also performs the functions of a degassing unit, and you can provide for a sinking bed biofilter right after the moving bed biofilter. It's a very good option. It additionally treats water suspension. I have talked about it in detail in my video dedicated to mechanical water treatment in RAS. By the way, if you haven't looked, be sure to watch the via the link. So the fixed bed biofilter not only treats water biologically, but it also provides for additional mechanical water treatment. It's usually installed as an additional unit that also improves the quality of both mechanical and biological water treatment. Therefore, in general, it's also recommended, and it's a good option. Let's now focus on moving bed biofilter. Why? Because this type of biofilters is most commonly used in RAS. Probably 4 out of 5 biofilters are exactly this type. Let's analyze how to select this type of biofilter correct. Of course, we will start with the media analysis. How to choose it properly? Basically, this is not difficult. And to make the right choice, you need to understand what type of fish you are going to farm. Because the specific oxidizing power of the biofilter depends on the type of fish. 
Secondly, you need to understand the protected surface area of the media. By the way, what is the difference between the surface area and the protected surface area? I'll explain it in simple words. When the media is in constant motion, the pellets rub against each other, and all the non-protected surface of this media is gradually wearing out, so biofilm is poorly formed on worn-out pieces of media. Thus, only part of the media that is not subjected to constant friction performs well, and this is the protected surface area. For example, media may have the total area of 800 square meters per cubic meter, while its protected area, the one that is not subject to abrasion, is equal to 600 and even 500 square meters per cubic meter. Therefore, it's very important to know and to use the protected surface area value in all the related calculations. Actually, it's necessary to make calculations through the oxidizing capacity, through the area of the media protected surface. I could provide you lots of relevant calculations. But within one video, it will probably be superfluous. So, I will definitely prepare a separate in-depth expert video and provide you with the calculations as well as the principles of biofilter selection. But to make it short and simple now. If we take standard media with the total surface area of 800 and the protected area of 500 to 600, then it will process about 3 kg of feed per day for trout, 5 kg of feed per day for sturgeon, and 8 to 10 kilograms of feed for African catfish. Probably many fish farmers and rice farmers in particular will argue those figures. Of course, there are a lot of aspects to take into consideration. There is a need to know the amount of protein contained in the feed, water temperature, the amount of water dissolved ammonia. So there are quite a lot of tricks and aspects. But I'm just providing you with the basic numbers and values in order to somehow determine how much media you need. So consider the amount of feed per day, divide by the amount of processed feed per 1 cubic meter of media, and you will get the required amount of media. Well, for example, you take 50 kilograms of feed per day, which is the maximum daily feed consumption. By the way, always take the maximum amount. One cubic meter of media processes 5 kilograms of feed. This is the value for sturgeons. Let's now divide 50 by 5, and we get 10 cubic meters of media will be required. Next, you need to properly change this amount of media into the biofilter. What way should it be done? The water volume in the tank should be twice more than the amount of media, and that's in order for the media to be able to move inside the tank, in order to create the right hydraulics, so that the media is not clogged and performs well. So if you have 10 cubic meters of media, you need to fill the biofilter with 20 cubic meters of water. And then the question arises, what should the biofilter tank be made of? Actually, there are several options, as there are many different materials. You can even choose stainless steel, why not? But there are two main materials which water treatment tanks, especially biofilters, are usually made of. The first is plastic. As a rule, it's welded polypropylene. It's usually used for manufacturing biofilters with the volume of up to 20-30 cubic meters, which are most commonly installed on the floor, which means above zero level. An outside metal reinforcement frame is provided for. So the first option is plastic. And the second option is concrete. This is also a widely used technology. You might say, concrete, why? This is too outdated. Well, how you can provide for an efficient water treatment unit a high-quality tank is not by placing it under zero level. You often need to dig it into the ground, because otherwise the water will simply not flow to the biofilter by gravity. If you embed a plastic biofilter tank, then it will simply be squeezed by the soil. Well, in general, for large tanks, concrete is rather a more practical solution than plastic, because it volumes of 50 to 100 cubic meters. It's often too difficult and expensive to make a rigid enough plastic tank, and in such cases, concrete tanks are used. So we have calculated that we need 10 cubic meters of media and the biofilter volume of 20 cubic meters. Let's see what should be done next. Of course, air must be supplied to the biofilter, as we are now speaking about a moving bed biofilter. How do we calculate the air consumption? There is also a very simple formula. You need to fit 10 volumes of biofilter per hour, meaning that you have 20 cubic meters of water in the biofilter. Multiply by 10, which makes 200 cubic meters of air that you need to supply. Accordingly, you know how much air can pass through each diffuser. You install the diffusers on the bottom and connect them to the air blower with the capacity of 200 cubic meters per hour. 
Not to make a mistake, let me be precise, the blow should produce not only airflow, but also a certain pressure at the operating point. This is a separate issue, which can also be covered in a separate video, since I feel that it will be useful to explain how to shoot this blower correctly. By and large, you only need to install some special retaining meshes inside the biofilter, and that is the tricky issue, which many inexperienced designers fail to consider. They use a small sized mesh, so that the media simply doesn't pass through, and this approach is not at all. But in fact, the following situation occurs. Water circulation inside the biofilter creates such a speed passing through the mesh, and since the mesh is small sized, the speed increases, that the media simply sticks to the mesh. Thus, media gets accumulated on the mesh and clogs it. The best scenario is that part of the media doesn't continue to operate, but the worst is that it clogs the output and the biofilter simply gets overflown, which unbalances the whole rest system. Now let's talk about how the biofilter is launched. Imagine that it has been designed, produced, installed, and now you need to start it. Since you will need to deal with microorganisms in the system, the biofilter is launched not in one click. It takes at least a month to start it. To be brief, there are two main technologies. The first is launching it when the system is already stocked. When you stock it with a small batch of fish, slowly start feeding it, and then gradually launch the biofilter. The fish eats, emits impurities into the water, and suspended matter is not removed from the system. The ammonium nitrogen accumulates in RAS. The bacteria already contained in fish are gradually released into RAS, settle on the media, grow slowly, forming colonies, and begin to launch the entire process of biological treatment. What are the advantages? The advantages are that no chemical substances are required. Well, the downsides are that the fish that you stock in order to launch the biofilter are suiciders. Most likely they will simply die or will get the high amount of waste. Some will survive, some will die. Therefore, if you start up the biofilter this way, then you need to be very careful. Stock the system with a small batch and preferably a low value one. Sometimes even carp is used to start up the biofilter. And the second option, which is a chemical biofilter launch. I personally adhere to this option. Don't be scared, we don't use any non-approved chemicals. In fact, the first is bacteria, the second is ammonia, ammonia solution in particular, and the third is sodium nitrite, which is a nitrate salt. Well, and as an additional additive, soda and feed. All this is poured into the system in certain proportions. I can tell you more about it in a special expert video. It turns out that you have bacteria in your system and all the environmental conditions in order for these bacteria to launch the biofilter as quickly as possible. Well, imagine you have the concentration of ammonium nitrogen of 2 to 3 mg per liter when you launch the biofilter on fish and starting the biofilter up artificially. With the use of chemical substances, you get the concentration of pollutants much higher than 10 to 20 mg per liter. Let's talk about how the biofilter performs when farming main fish species grown in RAS. Basically, the rate of bacterial metabolism in the biofilter depends on several factors. The first is the water temperature, and the second is the concentration of ammonia in RAS. The higher the water temperature and the concentration of ammonia are, the more pollutants the same number of bacteria processes daily. So, if we consider trout, which is a cold water fish species, its farming temperature is 14 to 16 degrees. The biofilter at RAS for growing trout works the slowest, because the bacteria are in a more, so to say, sleepy state. The metabolic rate of bacteria when growing trout is about one and a half times less than the same rate in sturgeon. Sturgeon has a growing temperature of 22-24 degrees. In principle, bacteria already perform better than on trout, so with the same amount of water pollutants, less media is required. And the most effectively bacteria perform in RAS for growing warm water fish species, such as African catfish. Why? First, the maximum water temperature is 26-28 degrees Celsius. The bacteria treat water as fast as possible. And the second is that ammonia concentration is very high. In systems for African catfish, the concentration of ammonia can easily reach 10 mg per liter. Bacteria have a lot of food and at the same time they perform at high temperature. Therefore, the metabolic processes are three times faster than in rust for trout. 
Thus, the same amount of media and the same amount of bacteria can process three times the amount of feed on African catfish compared to trout. And now a couple of very important tips. What actions are recommended to be avoided when biofilter is in operation? I'll tell you about some pitfalls, which many farmers have encountered and which you'd better not allow in advance if you decide to set up your own fish farm. And the first major issue is neglecting to provide for a high-quality mechanical water treatment unit preceding the biofilter. If you don't remove the mechanical suspended solids from the system, it will get into your biofilter, and other types of bacteria will cover and overgrow the media, not those that are involved in nitrification processes and the treated water from ammonium nitrogen, but other bacteria, which are heterotrophs, treating water from other organic pollutants. Thus, the necessary bacteria will lose the competition and will not perform efficiently, and as a result, the biofilter will finally fail. The second point is to keep the biofilter in the dark. If you have bright sunlight falling on the biofilter, this will severely impair its performance, and the bacteria need darkness to perform well. The third very important tip is to keep the water parameters relatively stable. Try to avoid sharp temperature fluctuations, variations in the amount of feed, that is, don't increase the feed load rapidly. Don't drop it, don't drive the temperature, because all that has a very strong effect on the bacteria. Well, and the fourth very important point. Avoid adding antibiotics and disinfectants into your biofilter, because they will immediately kill the microflora. What am I talking about? First of all, try to avoid using chlorine. I've encountered such cases when just because of using chlorine, the whole biofilter actually stopped and had to be restarted. And then probably several days will be needed to figure out what the problem is. So, and the second point, if suddenly your fish got sick and you are going to add some antibiotics, do that but try to stop the biofilter first. Because if antibiotics get into the biofilter, most likely all the bacteria will die. By the way, ozone usually has almost no effect on the biofilter due to special processes, because the bacteria are not within the nutrient layer, and ozone usually just doesn't penetrate into it. So, use an ozone, and even when the water in the biofilter gets saturated with ozone, it's not recommended, but in general it's a quite common story, normal phenomenon. Ozone usually doesn't destroy microflora, except for cases when it gets to the biofilter in very high concentrations. I have recollected that I haven't prepared interesting files for a long time, and this time I corrected my mistake. So today you can download an express biofilter calculation for any fish farm and any fish type. You just enter the fish capacity and you get the biofilter calculation. So download it via the link, press the like button, subscribe to my channel. This is Anton Pelcher and my channel on how to grow fish and make good money from it.